A few months ago, I did something that I'm incredibly ashamed of. I took my approximately $100,000 Patek Philippe off my wrist, threw it into the air and drop kicked it as far as I could. About a second later, it hit a wall and then dropped down on a concrete floor. I then picked it up and uh, to no surprise, it was pretty much destroyed. I'll show you a video that I took the next day. Um, the casing was broken and most importantly, the inner watch mechanics was broken. So in effect, the watch just didn't work anymore. I did this in the heat of a moment during a argument with some old friends that are significantly older than me. And in the brief moments leading up to me actually kicking this watch across the room and in the following days afterwards as well, I thought that I was doing this and had done this to prove a point in the argument. And no, don't worry, the point I was trying to prove was not that a Patek Philippe could be kicked across a room and down on a concrete floor and endure the damage. But when I looked deeper into myself and analyzed my actions for the following days and weeks, I understood that there was a much deeper reason that I had done this. And it was not what I initially thought. It was not to prove that stupid point in an argument. It was something inside of myself. Now, after hearing that I've taken such an expensive object and kicked it across a room and destroyed it, you might think, well, that's a crazy person or that person doesn't have any control over himself or his actions. That would be a very justified thought. And so perhaps after hearing me explain what I've done, you'd be surprised to hear that I actually feel more at peace and at ease and in control of myself than ever before. And despite the fact that a stupid action such as this one obviously isn't something that anyone should aspire to do themselves, I believe that the most important thing to do is to analyze ourselves, look inside and try to understand why we did what we did and try to figure out if there's potentially one or multiple lessons that we can learn from the mistakes and actions that we committed. And upon much reflection, I've definitely learned a very valuable lesson from this mistake. And I'm gonna try to convey this lesson and this experience to you so that you can learn it without having to drop kick your own $100,000 watch. I've divided this lesson into three aspects that I'm gonna share with you now. And at the end, these three aspects sort of all come together and make up this overarching lesson. All right, so aspect number one is what I call a monk's happiness is not admirable. Now that might sound counterintuitive, but let me explain. I remember dreaming about owning a standard black stainless steel Rolex Submariner. I think these are worth about $10,000 today. I'd sit in the back of class looking at watch websites and yeah, I really wanted the black Submariner and I wanted the green one as well, which is called the Hulk, which is significantly more expensive. I eventually ended up getting both of them, but I remember that was really what I wanted, right? I was very um, taken by these physical desires that I had to own these Rolex watches. Now, if we forward six, seven, eight years until today where I've driven many supercars and owned watches worth far more than that and lived in my dream apartment and traveled to luxury hotels all over, I think my mind had just reached a certain resentment of these physical possessions that I once so desired and now felt had become too much uh, an attached part of my identity. And so in one moment, I had enough. The discussion, the philosophical discussion I was having with these uh, older friends were obviously along these lines. And I think I was just fed up with having subconsciously reflected on this for months, if not years, uh, not like looking at these watches that are beautiful uh, and these other material possessions that are beautiful and expensive, but feeling like I didn't want them to be a part of me in the sense that I didn't want my identity to be connected to those material things. I wanted me to just be me and the work that I do and the impact that I want to have. I wanted to be acknowledged for who I am and not the things I wear. And furthermore, I believe that it had come to a point where I have such an abundance of, for lack of a better word, money, where I can buy all of the things I was dreaming about back then. And that just makes them obviously less valuable. And so whenever I would get a new thing, such as the Patek Philippe, I wouldn't necessarily know why I was getting it anymore. When I got my first couple of watches, well, the why was I've been dreaming about this for so long. I'm getting my first watch. I'm getting my third watch. I'm getting my fifth watch. And they brought that happiness because I was checking off a checkbox on my goals list. But eventually, you know, it came to a point where I'm just buying a hundred thousand dollar Patek Philippe without knowing why, without celebrating anything, without actually feeling any satisfaction. 
And so that's the curse of any material object in the world. They all have a latent potential. To go to an extreme, the roof above me could technically collapse on top of me and seriously injure me or even worse, right? That's the potentially extreme latent potential of the roof above my head right now. A watch could bring immense joy, but it could also bring misery or destructive behavior, such as we saw in the mistake I made. But to simplify, material objects, things can essentially either bring us joy and happiness or misery and destruction. Now, I'm not telling you to eliminate your material desires, not at all. After all, we are living in a material world surrounded by material things and objects, and some of them are beautiful, and so it makes sense that we want to own them. And so that brings us back to the monk. The reason I'm telling you not to eliminate all of your physical desires is because inner peace and happiness is not about isolating yourself from the world, eliminating your material desires, and just meditating by yourself. It creates nothing, and therefore it's pathetic. There's nothing cool about a monk or feeling at serenity or peace with himself because he's isolated himself from all the world's problems, all the world's temptations, and now he's feeling calm, at peace, and at ease. What's the point of that? It creates absolutely nothing. There's nothing admirable about a monk's happiness. Imagine if the whole world was just isolating themselves and meditating in silence and nothing was happening. It sounds silent and peaceful, but... We can all acknowledge that it would create absolutely nothing. It would move us nowhere. And in the end, we'd all be eliminated because, well, we'd do nothing and we'd have no desires to even have offspring, right? We're created from something, so we are something. And so we must in turn also create something. Essentially, the admirable goal is to, again, participate in humanity, in the global economy, while feeling some level of inner peace and happiness, but most importantly, while helping humanity progress and move forward and create better things. So again, there's nothing wrong with having material desires. I get massive enjoyment from some of the material things I've bought from a physical desire. Even some of my watches, there are physical objects that are expensive and dear to me that when I look at them, they put a smile on my face. They actually make me happy, but they do so because I purchased them at the right moment for the right reason, knowing why. And so as you can probably read between the lines now that was not the case with my Patek Philippe I was just at an abundant state in my life and I had this sudden physical spark of a desire and I went and bought it it gave me no fulfillment it didn't check off any boxes on my bucket list and there was nothing to celebrate I just did it it gave me nothing so I'd advise you to at least try and understand why you want something and how it'll make you feel before headlessly or mindlessly just chasing after it Just wanting more for the sake of more will never fulfill or make anyone happy. And so that leads us to aspect number two, which is why do you want money? Look, I didn't grow up with wealth. However, I did grow up with a lot of exposure to and teaching about the finer things in life, such as wine and art and design and culture, architecture, all of these things. I was, it was a dinner table conversation. It was something that we talked a lot about and something that I was exposed to a lot in one way or another. In simple terms, it was a matter of preference. Uh, My family prioritized those things above pretty much everything else. And I believe that this combined with some of the more traumatic experiences I had growing up, which led me to mature and become independent at a very young age, are two of the major factors that have contributed to me wanting to make money and doing so quite successfully. By now, it's probably been five years or more since I had my first 10K month and more than three years since I had my first 100K month. And so I've had some time to get adjusted to this quote unquote wealth. And it's definitely different from having to think twice before spending 15 bucks on takeout food because it will be a significant capital allocation out of my liquid balance. And so what have I learned about the effects that money can have on your mind from having experienced these polar opposite sides of the spectrum? Well, on one hand, that one of the potential key effects of having money is that it gives you freedom of mind. And by freedom of mind, I mean not having to worry about the basic necessities, but having the freedom of mind to be able to focus on what you want to do. But that on the other hand, it can also have the opposite effect. It can lead your mind into a place of no freedom and it can turn your own mind into a prison of only wanting more. And for a lot of people, it has that effect. The point is that money and the things you can buy with it and the things that it can do for you only makes you feel better 
insofar as your whys and your hows. This is why it's important to prioritize not just making money, but also how you make that money and why you make that money and what potential impact the work you do to make that money has on other people. Mindlessly chasing money without having a deeper mission and purpose with the way you're making that money will only lead to corruption and destruction of your own mind over time. A good example of this would be the people we see in the movie The Wolf of Wall Street, right? These young, money-crazed people on Wall Street just selling these worthless stocks to people only for their own benefit, right? Because they're taking that cold, hard commission, as I believe they call it. And the crazy thing is, a lot of young men, when they watch The Wolf of Wall Street, they idolize that lifestyle. You know, especially if they're young, they, they're, they're watching the movie and they're thinking, oh, I want to grow up and live like that, right? Work on Wall Street, sell these worthless stocks so I can get rich, have women, have cars, have watches, have boats, have mansions, etc. And the reason that they're idolizing this is, well, firstly, because obviously in the movie, it's really romanticized, right? They make it look uh, like a good thing, at least for the first uh, part of the movie. But the second reason is because these people that idolize that lifestyle, they don't know the actual hell money can give you in your mind if you don't know why you're making it or what your mission is. And that's the reason that so many people that are working those kinds of jobs where they're mindlessly chasing money without knowing why or the impact that they're having are doing so many drugs or dying young or just going into depression, right? They're mindlessly chasing without knowing their why. More precisely, I wrote this little quote. We can derive true fulfillment from the rewards of our labor only to the extent that we take pride in how they were earned. If you give a million dollars to a random person who has never worked hard or experienced having money before in their life, chances are they'll blow it all away quickly and they'll end up far more depressed than they ever were before. It's no accident that the spoiled, depressed rich kid and the random million dollar lottery winner are both stereotypes of people who come to wealth but have no ability to handle that wealth or the responsibility or sort of um, discipline, required discipline that comes with it. Therefore, knowing your why is incredibly important. It means knowing why you want to make money. It means knowing how you're going to live, treat and use that money once you have it. And of course, it means feeling good about the way that you're making your money. And so that leads us to the third, final and quite short aspect, which is live and learn, but please try to be a little bit smart. Having said all of the above, we obviously all live and learn in different ways through different experiences. I was chasing fancy stuff at one point and only through sufficient exposure to it, I was able to gain the perspective that I have now. The more money I make, the less I need or at least the less physical impulsive desires I get. Firstly, because, well, knowing that you can have something is almost better than having it. And secondly, because I gain my satisfaction through knowing that what I'm working on and the impact that it's going to have is good for humanity and for the world in the long term. And I believe that's an ideal end goal for all of us. Enjoying what we do and knowing that what we do can create good impact for the people around us and for humanity in general. If you can then get wealthy doing that thing on top, well, that's a great bonus. And now you're probably on a pretty healthy path to achieving happiness while also participating in the global society. So please go ahead, live your life, chase fancy things and chase abundance of money. But for your own sake, when you get it, think back to this video and what I told you and just analyze the situation, why you're making money, how you're making money, what impact you're having and how it's making you feel and what you're planning to do with that money. And again, just analyze, look inside and make sure that you're on the right path. I'm not on some moral hippie preaching being like, be thankful for what you have and don't chase any physical uh, material things, uh, ignore your physical desires, material desires. No, I I'm not a hippie and I'm definitely pro-capitalism and pro a growing economy. I'm not a socialist. I say this for your own good and perhaps most importantly, so that you as quickly as possible can get to a point where you're wealthy and you're making lots of money while also maximizing the positive impact that you're having on humanity. The people who are making lots of money but are scared, afraid to stop for a second and analyze how they're making that money or what impact their work is having, they're the same people that eventually become depressed and drown in their own misery because, well, they got all this money, but there's a certain point where you can't really do more with more money. You have an abundance of it. So the only thing you have left is your own moral integrity and the impact that you've created for humanity in your lifetime 
right? So by the time you're 50, 60, 70, you want to have a positive balance over on that moral integrity side so that you can actually feel great about yourself, right? Again, I'm saying, go make all the money you want. I want everybody to be rich. I want you to be as wealthy as possible. I'm not a socialist. I'm not against rich people. I have lots of rich friends. I know lots of rich people that are great people. I'm rich and I still chase money, but I know why. And I just want you to know why as well, okay? So I'm gonna leave you with one more quote that I wrote. If you're on the wrong train, get off at the next station because every stop further down the wrong track makes the return ticket far more costly, okay? So that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, A little bit of a longer one, sort of raw style philosophical preaching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and that you took some valuable lessons out of it. This was Sander Stage. Pleasure to have met you. Um, Thank you for your time and I hope to see you in the next video.